in the darkest shadows, in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read ancient tomes, the order, the order of the Abracast. We are the brave and bold. Studios presents The Jin Jihad The Jin Jihad kicks your face with myths, mysteries, epic battles, suicide bombers, quirky characters, and divine power armor. In this epic graphic novel, the warrior archangels descend on a city in chaos. It's all out war. The non-standard assembly battles an ancient terrorist organization and their ultimate weapon, a corrupted, magically enhanced, unstoppable monster, the Jin. This graphic novel is a wild ride. It's one part distant Arab myth, one part Old Testament angelic vengeance, and one part unique heroic tough guys. Available on Amazon, Get more info on the Jin Jihad and other titles at StigmataStudios.com. Enosh was asked who his father was, and he named Seth. And the questioners, the people of his time, continued, Who was the father of Seth? And Enosh said, Adam. And who was the father of Adam? Uh, and he had neither father nor mother. God formed him from the dust of the earth. But man has not appear man has not the appearance of dust. After death, man returns to dust, as God said, and man shall turn uh, again into dust. But on the day of his creation, man was made in the image of God. How was a woman created? Male and female, he created them. But how? <sighs> God took water. Of, and earth and molded them together in the form of man. But how, pursued the questioners. Enoch took six clods of earth and mixed them and molded them and formed an image of dust and clay. But, the people said, this image does not walk, nor does it possess any breath of life. And he uh, and then essayed to show them how God breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of Ad Adam and when he began to blow his breath into the image that he had formed, Satan entered it. <coughs> and the figure walked, and the people of his time, who had been inquiring these matters of Enosh, went astray after saying, What is the difference between bowing down before this image and paying homage to man? The generation of Enosh were thus the first idol worshippers, and the punishment for their folly was not delayed long. God caused the sea to transgress its bounds, and a portion of the earth was flooded. This was the time, also when the mountains became rocks, and the dead bodies of men began to decay, and still another consequence of the sin of idolatry was that the countenance of men of the following generations were no longer in the likeness and image of God, but <clears throat> as in the countenance of Adam, Seth, and Enosh had been, they resembled centaurs and apes, and the demons lost their fear of men. But there was still more serious consequence from the idolatrous practices introduced at the time of Enosh when God drove Adam forth from paradise and the Shekinah remained behind enthroned above a cherubim under the tree of life. That cherubim, by the way, was Uriel. <clears throat> the uh, angels descended from heaven and repaired thither and hosts <clears throat> received their instructions and Adam and his descendants sat by the gate to bask in the splendor of the Shekinah, 65,000 times more radiant than the splendor of the sun. The brightness of the Shekinah 
makes all upon whom it falls exempt from disease and neither insects nor demons can come nigh unto them and do them harm this was until the time of enosh when men began to gather gold silver gems and pearls from all parts of the earth and made idols thereof a thousand parsangs high what was worse by means of the magic arts taught to them by the angels Uza and Azazel, they set themselves as masters over the heavenly spheres and forced the sun and moon and the stars to be subservient to them instead of the Lord. And this impelled the angels to ask God, what is man? What thou art mindful of him, why dost thou abandon the highest of the heavens and the seed of the thy glory and thy exalted throne in Arabat, <clears throat> and descend to men who pay worship to these fucking idols, putting me upon the level with them? The Shekinah was introduced to leave the earth and ascend unto heaven amid the blare and flourish of trumpets and the myriad of angelic hosts bye bye chikina bye The Abercast. Occult. History. Conspiracy. Violence. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is going to be... Uh, oh, shit. What did I do? What is it? My b- fucking brain's fried. Is <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Okay, well, for the Abercast, and I know you guys are like, you're just bitching about doing all these extra episodes. What are you doing? Uh, and I'm like, I don't know. I just, I know that I just did those two episodes on the book, the uh, first Enoch, <laughs> and it was a two part episode, and there was like two, like an hour or so for each part. So that was good, good stuff. And like I said, it's one of my favorite old time like old school old testament stories or whatever <laughs> so today i'm tooling around in my studio and i start thinking about how i met a few episodes back i mentioned this book called <laughs> or this collection of book called uh the legend of the jews and uh, like this guy ginsburg went around and collected all these oral traditions from from all these from these jews and uh, they got some real wild stuff in there. And I was thinking about the this story, basically the story of Enoch and these Watcher angels and stuff in the Legend of the Jews. And I thought it'd be great <clears throat> if I just did like a little bonus episode, little, if I did this bonus episode to kind of where I could tell you the same story, you know, um, with just uh from like a different source right so the last two episodes were all about uh the fir- first e- first enoch part one and two was all about the book uh the F- enoch the book one i guess we could call it and so this is from the oral traditions of the jews it was collected in a book called the legends of the jews uh by uh <clears throat> by Ginsburg. And I know I've been talking a lot about lately, a lot about sacred texts. Well, you know, I believe it's just sacred hyphen text.org. You can actually find the legend of the Jews there. <laughs> so I thought that I would just tune in, rip through this real quick, tell you is basically the same story from just a different, 
not even really a different point of view as much as just from like a, from a different source material. And this book, this Legend of the Jews, has got some great fucking weird stories in it. And remember back when I was um, telling you guys the story of uh, Nimrod and uh, the um, uh, the Tower of Babel and the uh, War of the Nine Kings and Adam's Magic Underpants. All that stuff comes from the Legend of the Jews. So if you if you want to <laughs> if you want to get in, get reimmerse yourself back in there, uh, you could go to that. You could go to sacredtext.com and, and find that. Um, find those stories and that really uh, expands a lot. Cause I referenced the, the book of Jesher a lot for those episodes. And I totally, I have, for whatever reason, I just never made the connection to actually reference this legend of the Jews when I'm doing these episodes. Cause there's so much great weird sh- stuff in the, in this story. So, uh, so thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for coming off of, um, you know, we're coming off of a great record breaking month here at the Abercast. So, uh, I'm ecstatic for that. I'm looking forward to crunching the numbers, um, for this month, especially cause I'm doing so many crazy extra episodes. Um, so yeah. So with all that being said, you know, really all you should, if you're going to link back to this in any kind of way, I would definitely defer to the last two episodes from uh, about one Enoch and that will kind of go into that. But basically any angel, the terrifying angels of Genesis would be a good one uh, to get into this stuff. And uh, also I need to just a little show note. (laughs) My cold open was um, actually a chapter. uh, It's the first, it's a chapter called Enosh. And um, for some reason, whenever I was talking about the Shekinah, I first in my brain, it was like, (laughs) like a little Cholo chick named Chiquina like she's like uh, America Chavez or something she's like okay stupids this is what we're going to do so um yeah so I'm looking forward to getting into this with you guys and again this episode it's not required listening for sure since it's really just rehashing this stuff from the last two episodes but I thought it'd be fun to do especially in one shot just like this just like click click that's it's actually going to be two shots Last episodes were t- click, click, bang, bang, two shots. This one's just going to be click, click, bang, bang, just one bang. That's it. One bang. Bang, shebang. <clears throat> Come on, stupids, listen up. America Chavez is going to tell you something. Fall of the Angel. Sorry. The Fall of the Angel. The Nonstick. Ah, what the fuck? The Fall of the... <laughs> take three. The Fall of the... Bleep, bleep. Take three. The depravity of mankind, which began to show itself in the time of Enosh, had increased monstrously. And in the time of his grandson, Jared, by reason of the fallen angels, when the angels saw the beautiful, attractive daughters of men, they lusted after them and spoke. We will choose wives for ourselves and only from among the daughters of men and begat children with them. Their chief, Sem- Semenhazia, said, I fear one of the things that changes between these two versions, by the way, are the names of these angels. I fear me ye will not put this plan of yours into execution and I alone shall have to suffer the consequences of a great sin. And they answered him and they said, we will all swear an oath and we will all bind ourselves separately and together not to abandon this plan, but to carry it through to its end. Skeet, 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 (laughs) skeet. 200 angels descended to the summit of Mount Hermon, which owes his name to this very occurrence because they bound themselves there to fulfill their purpose. In the penalty of Harim Anthema, under the leadership of the 20 captains, they defiled themselves with the daughters of men unto whom they taught charms, conjuring formulas, how to cut roots, and the efficacy of plants and the ish. 
<clears throat> the issue from these mixed marriages was a race of giants, 3,000 elves tall, who consumed the possessions of men. <clears throat> when all had vanished and they could obtain nothing more from them, the giants turned against men and devoured many of them. And the remnant of men began to trespass against the birds, the beasts, reptiles, and fishes, eating their flesh and drinking their blood. <laughs> so they talk here about how they dis these angels descended on Mount Hermon, and they, they are always talking about that Mount Hermon got its name because of this... Uh, uh, this pact that they were, that they bound themselves. I actually think it's, uh, clever that, um, in some of these stories, the angels are bound well, definitely in first Enoch. The, the, they say a lot about they're binding these angels and in, in the valleys of these mountains. And a lot of times you'll hear that, uh, these angels are bound underneath Mount Hermon, which is a, a clever play on words, I guess, because he, they're, it's called Mount Hermon because they made this pact and bound themselves to each other there. And then in the end of the story, they're bound up, their faces are covered and they're thrown under this, this mountain named after a binding, <clears throat> Back to the book. Then the earth complained about the impetuous, impious evildoers, but the fallen angels continue to corrupt mankind. Azaziel taught men to make slaughtering knives, arms, shields, and coats of mail. And he showed them metals and how to work them and armlets and all sorts of trinkets. <laughs> and here's my favorite thing that, they, that the angels taught him. You'll know if you listen to the last episode. Um, and the use of rouge for the eyes and how to beautify the eyelids. And how to ornament themselves with the rarest and most precious jewels and all sorts of paints. The chiefs of these fallen angels, Sem Shemheziah, uh, instructed them in exorcisms and how to cut roots. Amaros taught them how to raise spells. Barkiel, divisions of the stars, and quack, able, quackable astrology. Ezekiel, arguary from the crowd, the clouds. <laughs> Arkiel, the signs of the earth, and Sam Shawell, the signs of the sun, and Sariel, the signs of the moon. While all of these abominations defiled the earth and the pious Enoch lived in a secret place. Remember from the from first Enoch how he was kind of like a hermit, like he lived away from everybody, which is probably why he's so pious, because the rest of civilization's all fucked up. They're all fucking birds and drinking blood and these fucking giants are running around eating and fucking everything. <laughs> this Enoch's just like, man, fuck fuck that like my extended family is crazy i see them on <laughs> the springer show <laughs> uh none among men knew his abode or what had become of him for he was sojourning with the angel watchers and the holy ones once he heard the call addressed to him enoch thou scribe of justice go into the watchers of the heavens who have left the high heavens and eternal places of holiness defiling themselves with women doing as men do taking wives unto themselves and casting themselves into the arms of destruction upon earth. Go and proclaim unto them that they shall find neither peace nor pardon, for every time they take joy in their offspring, they shall see the violent death of their son and sigh over the ruins of their children, and they will pray and supplicate evermore, and never shall they attain mercy or peace." <laughs> Enoch repaired to Azaziel and the other fallen angels to announce the doom uttered against them. And they were filled with fear, Tremble, trembling seized upon them, and they implored Enoch to set up a petition for them and to read it to the Lord of Heaven. And they could not speak with God uh, as aforetime. None even raised their eyes heavenwards for shame on the account of their sins and all their fucking... <laughs> and cannibalism Enoch granted their request and in a vision he was vouchsafed to the answer for which he was to carry back to these angels um it appeared to Enoch that he was to that he was wafted into heaven upon the clouds and he was 
was set down before the throne of God. Remember the great, um, uh, how the first Enoch explains God's throne room with the lightning and the, the movements of the stars on the crystal ceiling. Man, that shit is heavy metal. This is a little bit more to the point, though. He just shows up in the throne before the throne of God and God spake. Go forth and say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee hither to intercede for them. Verily, for it is you who ought to plead in behalf of men, not men on behalf of you. Why did you forsake the high, holy, and eternal heavens to pollute yourselves with the daughters of men, taking wives unto yourself, doing like the races on earth and begetting giant sons? Well, I mean, we all know the answer to that, right? Because <laughs> earth girls, dude, earth, fuck it, it's always the earth chicks. You can't beat them. You can't beat the earth chicks. Giants, where was that? Giants begotten by flesh and spirits will be called evil spirits on earth, and on the earth they will will be their dwelling place. Evil spirits proceeded from their bodies because they are created from above, and from the holy watchers is their beginning, the primal origin. They will be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits will be named, and the evil spirits of heaven have their dwelling in heaven, but the spirits of earth, which were born upon earth, will have their dwelling upon earth. And the spirits of the giants will devour, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and cause destruction on the earth, and work affliction they will take no kind of food, nor will they thir- or hold on. They will take no kind of food, nor will they thirst, and they will be invisible. And these spirits will rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. And since the days of murder and destruction and the death of the giants, when these spirits went forth from the soul of their flesh in order to destroy without incurring judgment. They will destroy until a day where the great consummation of the great world be consummated. <laughs> I remember I had problems with that at first you like to. Uh, when, uh, as now, and now, as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, uh, who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, You have been in heaven, and uh, through the hidden things had not been revealed to you. Uh, you, you know worthless mysteries. You know worthless mysteries, and to the hardness of your hearts you have recounted these to the women. And through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Enoch, ruler and teacher. After Enoch had lived a long time secluded from men, he once heard the voice of an angel calling to him, Enoch, Enoch, make thyself ready and leave the house and the secret place wherein thou hast kept thyself hidden and assume dominion over men and teach them the ways to which they shall walk and the deeds which they shall do in order that they may walk in the ways of God. Enoch left his retreat and betook himself to the haunts of men, and he gathered them about him and instructed them in the context, in the conduct pleasing God. And he sent messengers all over to announce, Ye who desire to know the ways of God and righteous conduct, come ye to Enoch. <clears throat> there upon a vast concourse of people thronged about him and hear the wisdom he would teach and learn from his mouth what is good and right. Even kings and princes, no less than 130 in number, assembled about him and submitted themselves to his dominion to be taught and guided by him. And he taught and guided all the others. Peace reigned thus over the whole of the world, 243 years during which the influence of Enoch prevailed. <clears throat> At the expiration of this period, in the year in which Adam died, he was buried with great honors by Seth, Enosh, Enoch, and Methuselah. Enoch resolved to retire again from the intercourse with men. 
That just means hanging out with dudes. He's not talking about fucking them. <clears throat> and devote himself wholly to the service of God. But he withdrew gradually first. He would spend three days in prayer and praise God. And on the fourth day, he would return to his disciples and grant them instruction. Many years passed thus. <clears throat> then he appeared among them, but once a week, later once a month, and finally once a year. Uh, the kings, princes, and all others who were desirous of seeing Enoch <clears throat> uh, and hearkening to his words did not venture to come close to him during his time of retirement. Such awful majesty sat upon his con his countenance. They feared for their uh, their very life, but if they looked at him, they therefore resolved that all men should prefer their request before Enoch on the day he showed himself unto them. The impression made by his teachings of Enoch upon all who heard them was powerful. And they prostrated themselves before him and cried, Long live the king! Long live the king! <clears throat> On a certain day, while Enoch was giving uh, audience to his followers, an angel appeared and made known unto him that God had resolved to install him as king over all the angels of heaven. What? 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 As until he had reigned over men, he called together all of its inhabitants on earth and addressed them as such. I have been summoned to ascend into heaven. <laughs> he sounds like a lunatic. I've been summoned to ascend into heaven, and I know not on what day I shall go thither. Therefore, I will teach you wisdom and righteousness before I go hence. In a few days yet, Enoch spent amongst men. And all the time uh, left to him, uh, he gave instructions in wisdom, knowledge, God-fearing, conduct, and piety. <clears throat> and he established law and order for the regulations of the affairs of men. And those gathered near him saw a gigantic steed descend from the sky. It's fucking heavy metal. Gigantic steeds descending from the fucking sky? And they told Enoch of it, who said, The steed is for me. The time has come in this day when I leave you, never to be seen again. And so it was. The steed approached Enoch, and he mounted upon its back, all the time instructing the people, exhorting them, and joining them to serve God and walk in his ways. 800,000 of the people followed a day's journey after him, but on the second day, Enoch urged his uh, retinue to turn back. Go ye home, lest death overtake you. Uh, if you follow me further. Most of them heeded his words and went back, but a number remained with him for six days. And although he admonished them daily to return and not bring death upon themselves, on the sixth day of his journey, he said to those still accompanying, Go ye home, for on the, on the morrow I shall ascend to heaven, and whoever will be near with me will, will die. <laughs> Nevertheless, some of his companions remained with him, where, saying, Wherever... Wh where tither ever oast thou goest, oh Jesus, we will go, and by the living God, death alone shall part us. All right, bet. On the seventh day, Enoch was carried into the heavens with a fiery chariot drawn by fiery chargers. The day after. The kings who had turned their back in the good time sent messengers to inquire to the fate of the men who had refused to separate themselves from Enoch, for they had noted the number of them. They found snow and great hailstones upon, <clears throat> upon the spot whence Enoch had risen, and when they searched beneath uh, they discovered the bodies of all who had remained behind with Enoch. He alone was not amongst them, for he was on high in heaven.
ascension of Enoch. This was not the first time Enoch had been in heaven. Once before, when he sojourned amongst men, he had, been, he had been permitted to see all there is on earth and in the heavens. On a time when he was sleeping, a great grief upon his heart, and he wept in his dream, not knowing what grief meant, <clears throat> nor what would happen to him. And there appeared unto him two men, very tall, their faces shone like the sun, and their eyes were like burning lamps, and fire came forth from their lips. Their wings were brighter than gold, and their hands whiter than snow. They stood at the head of Enoch's bed, and they called him by his name, and he awoke from his sleep, and hastened to make uh, obe uh, obsciencence to them, and was terrified. And these men said to him, Be of good cheer, Enoch, be not afraid. The everlasting God hath sent us to thee, and lo, today thou shalt ascend with us to heaven, and tell thy sons and thy servants, and let none seek thee till the Lord bring thee back to them. So I'm going to just stop real quick right here. And I'm going to say, if you read enough of this shit, you're going to see all the time. <laughs> Whenever angels appear to people, the first thing they say to them all the time is, whoa, whoa, don't be afraid. Do you know why they say that? Because these fucking things are terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> they don't show up like little babies with wings and like, hey, hi, by the way, we're going to take you up to heaven. Look at me. Am I cute? Or they're not standing there with their wings and like looking like, I don't know. I don't like whatever you would think like an angel would look like. They don't look like that. You know, they show up and they're freaky. They're like on fire and like flames are shooting from their face and their eyes are glowing and the first thing they always say is, whoa, whoa, big fella, you don't have to be afraid of me. That's just something to think about. Enoch did as he was told, and after he had spoken to his sons and instructed them not to turn aside from God and to keep his judgments, these two men summoned him and took him <clears throat> on their wings and placed him on the clouds, which moved higher and higher till they sent him down in the first heaven. Here they showed him 200 angels who rule the stars and their heavenly service. Here they saw also the treasuries of the uh, snow and ice and clouds and dew. <clears throat> From there they took him to the second heaven where he saw the fallen angels imprisoned. And they who obeyed not the commandments of God but took the counsel of their own will. The fallen angel said unto Enoch, O man of God, pray to us, to or pray for us to the Lord. And he answered, Who am I, a mortal man? <clears throat> what should I pray for angels? Who knows whither I go and what awaits me? Okay, so a word about this. These fallen angels are not the, these are not the horny angel. These are not the, the angels that we were talking about earlier. The, these are like Satan's angels. That's the Gregory, Gregory or the Watcher angels. It's hard to find places where they are called fallen. I mean, they've done some fucked up shit, but this right here, then this right passage right here is telling you who they are. They're saying that they, they, didn't they just uh they did not obey god's commandments and also they took counsel of their own will and that's something that angels cannot do i mean i guess they can do it you know i mean i guess in a way that these angels that came down to fuck these women also did that like but these angels normally they don't have free will like that's why they're different than human beings well that's one of the reasons they're different from human beings like flame and shit's not shooting out of their fucking face but um, that's the thing, like, that's what's special about uh, humans. Like, humans are made from dirt and all this, just like they were talking about, but they have free will. Genies, now the jinn are made from smokeless fire, and they have free will, but all the interesting genie stories are all about their free will being taken from them. They're being enslaved every time you fucking turn around. These genies are getting bound to objects and being told what to do. Even if you want to, like, I mean, that ties right into the Lesser Kia Solomon episodes that we just did. And these angels, a lot of these angels, I mean, they're 
they act crazy, but in most cases, they do not have free will. Remember how I kept talking about, like, in the, these angel stories about, like, in God's throne room, God's chairs floating around, and then the the highest ranking host of angels all they get to do is just circle and sing his praise like 24 hours a day like nobody would want to do that's some crazy narcissistic robot angel stuff (laughs) all right so now um i'm totally off track okay uh back to the book they took they took him from thence to the third heaven and they showed him paradise and with all the trees and beautiful colors and their fruits ripe and luscious and all kinds of food, which they produce springing up with delightful fragrance in the, the midst of paradise, he saw the tree of life. And in that place in which God rests, he comes into paradise. And the tree cannot be described for its excellence or its sweet fragrance and its beautiful more than any other created thing. <clears throat> and it's all on all its sides is like the gold and crimson in appearance and transparent as fire. And it covers everything from its roots in the garden. There go forth, uh, four streams, which pour out honey, milk, oil, and wine. All. Yeah. It's like a wine fondue. (laughs) Uh, And they go down to the paradise of Eden. And what lies on the confines between the earth region of corruptibility and the heavenly region of incorruptibility. And thence they go along the earth and um, also saw the 300 angels who kept the garden and with uh, never ceasing voices of the blessed sing and <laughs> as they serve the Lord every day. And the angels leading Enoch explained to him that this place is prepared for the righteous. And while the terrible place prepared for the sinners is in the north region of the third heaven he saw there all sorts of torturers and uh, impenetrable gloom and there is no light there but a gloomy fire is always burning and all that place has fire on all sides and all sides cold and ice thus it burns and freezes it's like the riddle of steel (laughs) from Conan the Barbarian and the angels terrible and without pity carry savage weapons and their torture is unmerciful so think about that for a second all you people that are like oh my these angels are so they're so (laughs) they're so good and my guardian angel these new age kind of fucking angel people just let me reread this real quick the angels terrible and without pity carry savage weapons and their torture is unmerciful (laughs) oh my god it's awful. Oh, it's like a fucking meatloaf cover. Uh, the angel. <clears throat> I'm sorry. A lot of reading. I'm trying to rip through this. The angels took him then to the fourth heaven and showed him all the comings in and goings forth and all the rays of light of the sun and the moon. And he saw the 15 myriads of angels who go out with the sun and attend him during the day and the thousand angels who attend him by night and each angel has six wings and they go forth in the chariot of the sun (laughs) while 100 angels keep the sun warm and lit up he also saw wonderful and strange creatures named phoenixes and chaldrexi who attend the chariot of the sun and go uh, with him bringing heat and dew and they showed him also six gates in the east and four in the heaven, uh, fourth heaven, uh, by which the sun goes forth, and six gates in the west where he sets, and also the gates by which the moon goes out, and those by which she enters. In the middle of the fourth heaven, he saw an armed host serving the Lord with symbols and organs of unceasing voices. In the fifth heaven, he saw the many hosts of the angels called Gregori, and their appearance was like men, and their size was greater and the size greater than the size of the giants, and their countenance were withered and their lips silent. <laughs> On his question, uh, who they were, the angels leading him answered. These are the Gregori, uh, who were with the prince 
Salmael rejected the Holy Lord. Enoch said to the Gregori, Why wait ye, brethren, and serve ye not before the face of the Lord? And why perform ye not your duties before the face of the Lord? And anger not your Lord to the end. And the Gregori listened to the rebuke. And when the trumpets resounded together with a loud call, they also began to sing with one voice. And their voice went forth before the Lord with sadness and tenderness in the seventh heaven. He saw the seven bands of the archangels who arrange and study the revolutions of the stars and changes the moon and the revolutions of the sun and superind- uh, superintended the good and evil conditions of the world. And they arrange teachings and instructions and sweet speakings and singings of all kinds and glorious praise. And they hold instruction or sorry, they hold in subjugation, all living things, both in heaven and on earth. And in the midst of them are seven, phoenixes and seven cherubim and seven winged creatures singing with one voice and lots of singing in heaven lots of singing in heaven when enoch reached the seventh heaven and uh when he reached the seventh heaven he was there with bruce leroy and they were watching uh i can't remember what her name was what was vanity's name in the in fucking last dragon Barry Gordy's last dragon I remember they went to the seventh heaven and he had to fight the Shogun of Harlem you know what I'm fucking saying (laughs) do you know what I'm saying I don't know if you do (laughs) Um, okay so Enoch reached the seventh heaven and saw with the fiery hosts the great archangels and the incorporeal powers and lordships and principalities and powers and he was afraid and trembled with a great terror and those leading him took a hold of him and brought him into the midst of them and and said be of good cheer Enoch what else did he say he said don't be afraid <laughs> and they showed him the Lord from afar sitting on his lofty throne while all the heavenly hosts divided in ten class classes have approached stood upon the ten steps according to their rank and made Obscience to the Lord, and they proceeded in their place in joy and mirth and boundless light, singing songs with low and gentle voices and gloriously serving him. They leave not nor depart day nor night, standing before the face of the Lord, working his will, cherubim and seraphim, standing around his throne, and the six-winged creatures overshadowing all his throne, singing with a soft voice before the face of the Lord, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Heaven and the earth are full of his glory. And when he had seen all these, the angels leading him said, Enoch, up to this time, we were ordered to accompany thee. And they departed and he saw them no more. Enoch remained on the extremity of the seventh gate in giant terror, saying to himself, Woe is me! What has come upon me? But then Gabriel came down and said unto him, Enoch, be not afraid. Stand up and come with me, and stand up before the face of the Lord forever. And Enoch answered, O my Lord, my spirits have departed from me. (laughs) <laughs> with fear and trembling when i read that really what he's saying is i just pissed myself oh my lord i just pissed myself from fear and trembling <laughs> Call men to me who have brought me to this place upon them. I have relied and now with them I would go before the face of the Lord. And Gabriel turned, uh, Gabriel hurried him away like a leaf carried off by the wind and set him before the face of the Lord. And Enoch fell down and worshiped the Lord who said unto him, Enoch, be not afraid. Rise up and stand before my face forever. And Michael lifted him up. And with the command of the Lord took his earthly robe from him and anointed him with holy oil and clothed him. And when he gazed upon himself, he looked like one of God's glorious ones and fear and trembling departed from him. God called then one of his archangels who was more wise than all the others and wrote down all of the doings of the Lord and said, bring forth the books from my store place and get 
<laughs> and give a reed to Enoch and uh, and interpret the books to him. The angel did <clears throat> what he was commanded, and he instructed Enoch thirty days and thirty nights, and his lips never ceased speaking while Enoch was writing down all the things about heaven and the earth and the men and all that is suitable to be instructed. He also wrote down all about the souls of men, (laughs) those of them which were not born, and the places prepared for them forever. He copied all accurately, and he wrote 366 books. And after he received all the instruction from the archangel, the uh, the God revealed unto him great secrets which even the angels do not know and told him out of the lowest darkness, uh, the visible and invisible were created and how formed heaven, light, water, and the earth. And also about the fall of Satan and the creation and sin of Adam. He narrated to him and further revealed to him that the duration of the world will be 7,000 years. And the eighth millennium will be a time when there is no, (laughs) <laughs> computation no end and neither years nor months nor weeks nor days nor hours <clears throat> so what we're talking about here is the <laughs> the dmt trip that poor enoch's on <laughs> so the angels that have been ferrying him around uh giving him the tour of this heaven were just like all right buddy peace out and they took off and he started freaking out um, then Gabriel came up and was like, yo, bro, it's all cool. Come on. Um, and then part, probably one of the most, um, probably one of the most like intriguing kind of parts of I probably any story to me, this was just fuel, uh, for like my version of Metatron, this idea of Michael, uh, right here, Michael, lifted him up and at the commandment of the Lord took his earthly robe from him and anointed him in holy oil and clothed him. And when he gazed upon himself, he looked like one of God's glorious ones. This is him being turned into an angel. And I say turn into an angel, uh, kind of, that's not really what I mean though. Cause it's like, there's still a man there. He just gets an angel suit. <laughs> And, uh, if you go, if you get into the, into my comic books, the Dijin Jihad shows basically this, like him getting put into this like angel suit, which, uh, basically is like a divine power armor, not in like an anime kind of way, but the way that it works is sort of like a, a power armor. Anyhow, that, that this is really the reason that I wanted to share the story f- the le- from this Legend of the Jews with you guys because of this that one part. There's also some more stuff about him getting turned into an angel and stuff, but that one, I think, that is the best one. I, that is the best one. Michael anointing him and washing him and putting him in an angel suit. That's fucking, dude, that's badass. The Lord finished this revelation to Enoch with words, <clears throat> with the words. And now I give the Samuel and Raguel and uh, who uh, brought thee to me, go with them upon the earth and tell thy sons w- uh, what things I have said unto thee. And what thou hast seen from the lowest heaven up to my throne and give them the works written out by thee. And then shall, uh, and they shall read them and they shall distribute the books to their children's children and from one generation to another generation and from nation to nation. And I will give thee messenger Michael for thy writings and for the writings of thy father, thy father's Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahael, and Jared, thy father. And I shall not require them till the last age for I have instructed my two angels, Iriuk and Meriuk, whom I have put upon the earth as their guardians. And I have ordered them, uh, in time to guard them in that account <clears throat> of what, uh, I shall do in thy family may not be lost in the deluge to come. See, he's still dealing with these fucking angels. He's already, he, this is part of his plan, I guess. Um, for the, for this deluge thing on the cover of 
the wickedness and iniquity of men, I will bring a deluge upon the earth, and I will destroy all. But I will leave a righteous man of thy race uh, with all his house, who shall act according to my will from thy seed, and will be raised up numerous generations into the extinctions of the family. I will show them the books of thy writing and of thy father and guardians of the them on earth and i will show them to the to the men who are true and please me and they shall tell to another generation and they having read them shall be glorified at last more than before and then god was sent to earth to remain there oh sorry enoch was sent to earth to remain there for 30 days to instruct his sons But before he left heaven, God sent an angel to him whose appearance was like snow and his hands were like ice. And Enoch looked at him and his face was chilled that men might be able to endure the sight of him. The uh, the angels who took him to heaven put him upon his head in the place where uh, his son Methuselah was expecting him by day and by night. Enoch assembled his sons and all of his household and instructed them faithfully, telling all the things that he had seen, heard, and written down. And he gave his books to his sons and uh, to keep them and to read them, admonishing them not uh, to not conceal the books, but to tell them to all desiring to know when the 30 days <clears throat> had been completed, the Lord sent darkness upon the earth. Ooh, the sign of Jonah. And there was gloom and it hid the men standing with Enoch and the angels hasted and took Enoch and carried him to the highest Heaven, where the Lord received him and sent him before his face, and the darkness departed from the earth, and there was light, and the people saw and did not understand how Enoch was taken, and then and they glorified God. And Enoch was born on the sixth day of the month of Siwan, and he was taken to the heaven in the same month, Siwan, on the same day, and in the same hour when he was born. And Methuselah hasted, and all his brethren and the sons of Enoch, and they built an altar in the place called Accusan, where Enoch was taken up to heaven, and the elders... And all of the people came to the festivities and brought their gifts and the, to the sons of Enoch and made a great festivity, rejoicing and being merry for three days, praising God, who had given uh, such a sign by the, by the means of Enoch, who had found favor with them. So again, here we go. This is Enoch. Uh, this is Enoch as like a pre-Christ figure. Like he disappears and they're fucking partying for three days. <clears throat> after he comes he goes to heaven he gets all this knowledge he comes down to teach all this knowledge for a month this and then gets zip gets beamed up to heaven <clears throat> pretty interesting um i still got some more to go but i got to i got to take a break here i got to i got to The translation of Enoch. The sinfulness of men was the reason why Enoch was translated to heaven. (laughs) Thus Enoch himself told Rabbi Ishmael, When the generation of the deluge transgressed (laughs) and spoke to God, saying, Hold on. (laughs) I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Departing from us. For we do not desire to know thy ways. Enoch was carried to heaven to serve there as a witness that God was not a cruel God in spite of the the destruction decree upon the living beings on earth. When Enoch, under the guidance of the angel Enpael, was carried from earth to heaven. The holy beings, the Ophanim, the Seraphim, the Cherubim, and all those who moved the throne of God, and the ministering spirits whose substance is of consuming fire, they all, at a distance of 650 million and 300 parsangs, noticed the presence of a human being, and they, expla- and they exclaimed, 
<laughs> I'm gonna rewind this for a second. Uh, Enoch, under the gui- under the guidance of the angel NPL, was carried from earth to heaven. The holy beings, the Ophanim, the Seraphim, the Cherubim, all those who move the throne of God, and their ministering spirits, whose substance of is of consuming fire and they all at a distance of 650 million and 300 parsangs noticed the presence of a human being and they exclaimed whence the odor of one born of woman how how comes he into the highest heaven uh, uh, of the fire consecrating angels. But God replied, O oh, my servants and hosts, ye my cherubim, ophium, and seraphim, let this not be an offense unto you. For all the children of men denied me and my mighty dominion, and they paid homage to these idols. So I transferred the Shekinah from earth to heaven, you stupids. <laughs> In this man, Enoch is the elect of men, and he has more faith, justice, and righteousness than all the rest. And he is the only reward I have derived from this terrestrial world. And before Enoch could be admitted to the service near the divine throne, the gates of wisdom were opened unto him. And the gates of understanding and of discernment of life, peace, and the Shekinah, and the strength of power, essay of might, loneliness, and grace, of humility and fear of sin, equipped by God with extraordinary wisdom, sagacity, judgment, knowledge, learning, compassionateness, love, kindness, grace, humility, strength, power, might, splendor, beauty, shapelessness, and all other excellent qualities like narcissism and micromanagement (laughs) beyond the endowment of any celestial beings, Enoch received besides many thousand blessings from God in his height. Oh, here we go. Uh, Enoch received besides many thousand blessings from God and his height and his breath became equal to the height and breadth of the world and 36 wings were attached to his body and the right and the uh to the right and to the left and each as large as the world and this all sounds familiar yeah and the 365,000 eyes were bestowed upon him each brilliant as the sun a magnificent throne was erected for him besides the gate, the gates of the seventh celestial palace. And a herald proclaimed throughout the heavens concerning him, who was henceforth to be called Metatron in a celestial regions. I have appointed my servant Metatron as prince and chief over all the princes in my realm, with the exception only of the eight august and ex- Exalt, exalted princes that bear my name wherever uh, whatever angel has requested to to prefer to me shall appear before Metatron and uh, that will command at my bidding ye must observe and do for the prince of wisdom and the prince of understanding are at his service and they will reveal and they will reveal unto him the sciences and celestials and the terrestrials and knowledge of the present order of the world and the knowledge of the future order of the world furthermore i have made him in the guardian of the treasures of the palaces of heaven arabot and of the treasures of life that are in the highest heaven oh see this is him this is like um i'm trying to think of like you know, in Sam Raimi movies, like when the hero is like getting ready to do something, he's like tying a shoe. So it's like cuts real close to like a wing getting attached to him. And then like the next cut is like a bunch of glowing sun fucking eyes, like with J.J. Abrams, like fucking lens flares on him. And then it cuts to like his like him sitting on his throne, you know, like he's he's getting ready. This is him. He's being presented to heaven as like god jr the little tetragrammaton (laughs) they should have little plush dolls of them 
Out of the love he bore, Enoch, God arrayed him in magnificent garment to which every kind of luminary and existence was attached and a crown gleaming with 49 jewels of splendor which pierced all parts of the seven heaven. And all four corners of the earth was in the presence of the heavenly family. He set this crown upon the head of Enoch and called him the little Lord. It bears also that the letters by means of which heaven and earth were created and the seas and rivers and mountains and valleys and planets and constellations and lightning and thunder, snow and hail, storm and whirlwind, these (laughs) and also all things needed in the world and the mysteries of creation, even the princes of heavens, when they see Metatron tremble before him and prostrate themselves at his magnificence and majesty, the splendor and beauty radiating from his him overwhelm them and the wicked Samael uh, and the greatest of them even Gabriel the angel of fire and Bardiel the angel of hair hail Ruhiel, the angel of wind, and Barkiel, the angel of lightning, Zamiel, the angel of the hurricane, Diriam, rock you like a Zamiel. Zachiel, the angel of the storm, and Suriel, Suiel, the angel of the earthquake, Zaphiel, the angel of showers, Ramael, the angel of thunder, Rashiel, the angel of whirlwind, and Shagiel, the angel of snow, Matriel, the angel of rain, Samjiel, the angel of the day, it's like he's like the soup of the du jour, the a- angel du jour, Leliel, the angel of night, and Gagliel, the angel of the solar system, Ophanel, the angel of the wheel of the moon, and Kokabiel, the angel of the stars, and <sighs> Rattael, the angel of all the constellations. When Enoch was transformed into Metatron, his body was turned into a celestial fire, and his flesh became flame, and his veins fire, and his bones glimmering coals. In the light of his eyes, heavenly bright, and his eyeballs torches of fire, and his hair flaming blaze, and his limbs and organs burning sparks, and his frame a consuming fire. To the right of him sparkled flames of fire, and to the left of him burnt torches of fire, and on all sides of him was engirdled by a storm and whirlwind, hurricane and thundering. (laughs) That is heavy metal. Uh, I'm just going to rip through this Methuselah chapter real quick. Back on Earth. (laughs) Meanwhile, behind the facade of this innocent-looking bookstore... And after the translation of Enoch, Methuselah was proclaimed ruler of the earth by all kings, and he walked in the footsteps of his father, teaching truth and knowledge and the fear of God to the children of men in his life, and deviating from the path of rectitude, neither to the right nor to the left, and delivered the word from thousands of demons, posterity of Adam, which he had begotten with Lilith, and that she-devil of she-devils, the demons and evil spirits, as often as they encountered a man, has sought to injure and even slay him until Methuselah appeared and supplicated the mercy of God. He spent three days in fasting, and then God gave him permission to write the ineffable name upon his sword, wherewith he slew ninety-four myriads of the demons in one minute, until Argamas, the firstborn of them, came to him and uh, entreated him to desist, at the same time handing the names of the demons and imps over to him, so that Methuselah placed their kings in iron fetters, while they re- while the remainder fled away and hid themselves in the innermost chambers. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up next. Next. All right, so we've been on quite a journey so far. Um, Enoch has been to heaven a few times and pissed himself in the presence of God. 
And ultimately, he gets uh, transformed into the most powerful of the archangels named Metatron. And uh, his son winds up becoming the seventh master of the earth in the anti-diluvian times but this whole thing started off with uh, a bunch of angels fucking around (laughs) and we kind of lost the we kind of lost the fallen we kind of lost the fallen angel story here so we're going to skip ahead a few uh sections the next section from enoch is uh is the noah section and early in the noah section they uh they tell the punishment of the fallen angel so grown to manhood noah followed in the ways of his grandfather methuselah while all other men of his time rose up against this pious king so far from observing his precepts they pursued evil inclinations in their heart and perpetrated all sorts of a abominable deeds chiefly the fallen angels and their giant posterity caused the depravity of mankind the blood spilled by the giants cried unto heaven from the ground and the four archangels accused the fallen angels and their sons before god whereupon he gave the following orders to them uriel was to send noah to announce to him that the earth would be destroyed by a flood and to teach him how to save his own life raphael was told to put the fallen angel azaziel into chains and cast him into a pit of sharp and pointed stones in the desert Dudael and cover him with darkness. And so he was to remain until the great day of judgment when he would be thrown into the fiery pit of hell and the earth would be healed of the corruption he had contrived upon it. Gabriel was charged to proceed against the bastards and retrobates the sons of the angels begotten to the daughters of men and plunge them into deadly conflicts with each other. Shemahaziah ilk were handed over to michael who first caused them to witness the death of their children in their bloody combat with each other and then he bound them and pinned them under the hills of the earth where they will remain 70 generations until the day of judgment to be carried thence to the fiery pit of hell the fall of azaziel and shemaziah Uh, came about in this way when the generations of the deluge began to practice idolatry god was deeply grieved Uh, The two angels, Semizea and Azazel, arose and said, O Lord of the world, it has happened that which we foretold at creation of the world and of man, saying, What man, what is man? Thou art mindful of him. And God said, And what will become of the world now without man? Whereupon the angels, we will occupy yourselves with it. (laughs) Then God said, I'm well aware of it. But I know uh, that if you inhabit the earth, your evil inclinations will overpower you and you will be more iniquitous than ever. Uh, The angels pleaded, grant us permission to dwell upon men and they shall see and we shall sanctify thy name. And God yelled at their wish, saying, descend and sojourn among men. So these angels were like, come on, we don't have you don't have to kill everybody. Like, just let us hang out down here. And God's like, what's the earth without men? He was like, he's like, what the fuck would you do? Like, what would you be fucking right now if there was no men down there or, you know, people, human beings? When the angels came to earth and beheld the daughters of men and all their grace and beauty, they couldn't restrain their passion. Shemizeah saw a maiden a maiden named ishtar and he lost his heart to her and she promised to surrender herself to him if first he taught her the ineffable name by means of which he raised himself to heaven and assented to her condition but once she knew it she pronounced the name and herself ascended to heaven without fulfilling her promise to the angel because she kept herself aloof from sin uh we will place her among the seven stars and that uh, that men may never forget her. And she was put in the constellation of Pleiades. Bitch, Pleiades. 
Shemizaya and Ezazil, however, were not deterred from entering into alliances with the daughters of men. And the first two sons were born. Ezazil began to devise the finery and ornaments by which women allure men. Thereupon, God sent Metatron to tell Shemizaya that he had resolved to destroy the world and bring on the deluge. The fallen angel began to weep and grieve over the fate of the world and the fate of his two sons. And the world went under. What would they have to eat? Who would they, uh, they who needed a daily thousand camels and thousand horses and a thousand steers. These two sons of Shemaziah, Hiawa and Hyaya, by name, dreamed dreams, and one saw a great stone which covered the earth was marked all over with lines upon lines of writing, and an angel came and with a knife obliterated all these lines, leaving but four letters upon the stone, and the other son saw a large pleasure grove planted with all sorts of trees, but the angel approaches bringing, or sorry, bearing axes, and they felled the trees, sparing one a single one with uh, three of its branches. When Hiawe and Hiye awoke, they uh, repaired to their father who interpreted the dreams for them saying, God will bring a deluge and none will escape with his life, excepting only Noah and his sons. And when they heard this, the two began to cry and scream, but their father consoled him, soft, soft, do not grieve as often as men cut or haul stones or launch vessels. They shall evoke your names, Hiawa and Haye. Then his prophecy sued them. Shemizea then did uh, penance and he suspended himself between the heaven and the earth. In this position of a penitent sinner, uh, he hangs to this day. But uh, I've mentioned this before on the show. I can't remember what the context was. Uh, I still don't remember. I gotta wrap this up though. I can't think about it too much. But Azaziel persisted uh, uh, in his sin of leading mankind astray by means of sensual allurements. Uh, for this reason, two he goats were sacrificed in the temple on the day of atonement. One for God that he pardoned the sins of Israel, and the other for Azaziel that he bare the sins of Israel. Unlike Eshtar, the pious maiden uh, Nama, Nam, Name, Nama, uh, something like that. I'm tired. The lovely sister of Tubal Cain. So Tubal Cain. I don't know if they talk about, uh, okay, so yeah, hold on, um, led the angels astray with her beauty and from her union with Shamdom sprang the devil Asmodeus. She was a, she was as shameless as all the other descendants of Cain and as prone to bestial indulgences. <laughs> Canaanite women and Canaanite men were alike in their habit of walking abroad naked, and they gave themselves up to every conceivable manner of lewd practice. Of such were the women whose beauty and sensual charms tempted the angels from the path of virtue, and the angels, on the other hand, who sooner had rebelled against God and descended to earth that they lost transcendental qualities and were invested with subluminary sublumin, sublunary bodies so that a union with the daughters of men became possible the offspring of these alliances between the angels and the Canaanite women were the giants known for their strength and their sinfulness as uh, their very name the Emim indicated as they inspired fear and have many other names. Sometimes they go by Raphaim because one glance, uh, one glance at them made one's heart grow weak. Or by the name Gibberum, simply giants because their size was so enormous and their thigh measured 18 L's. <laughs> or by the name... <laughs> Or by the name Zamzumium, because they were uh, great masters in war. Or by the name, ooh, this is interesting. Or by the name Anakim, because they touched the sun with their neck. Or by the name Ivium, because like the snake, they could judge the qualities of the soil. Or finally, by the name Nephilim, because they bring the world to its fall, and they themselves fell. 
All right, man. I hope you guys like this quick, <laughs> quote, quick, unquote, uh, bonus episode. Like I said, um, we just went through first Enoch uh, in two parts. And today I was just thinking, you know, we could just do three parts and I can uh, do the Legends of the Jew version of the same story. So that's it. And there you go. And I'm, I got to wrap this up. I'm, I'm recording this Monday night, so I'm planning on converting and posting it right up. So it you know, it's up first thing on Tuesday for everybody. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for, uh, liking the show. And thanks again for the record breaking month last month. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to crunching the numbers. Um, uh, in what is it a week, two weeks? What is it? I don't know. A week or two weeks, something like that. And, uh, thank you guys again for everything and see you next week probably going to do something a little bit more rational <laughs> just letting everybody know <laughs> uh, between the lesser key of solomon and then falling into this enoch metatron thing like we're probably going to do something a little bit more on the rational side just to get everybody ready so what do you think about that what kind of shows do you guys like do you like the woo woo shows do you like the the religious mythology shows? Do you like the history shows? I don't know. I don't know. Find me. You you should know where to find me. Find me and let me know what you think. Stigmata Studios presents The Scorpion Strikes. In this comic book, a terrorist called The Scorpion is transported to a secret CIA prison. He quickly turns the tables on the guards and administrators and releases the prisoners. A well-armed anarchist called Constituent Zero assembles a team and fights to take the prison back. The story is a dark political action thriller. The Scorpion's actions set the stage perfectly for the Jin Jihad. Available on Indie Planet. Get more info on The Scorpion Strikes the Jin Jihad, and other titles at StigmataStudios.com. Stigmata Studios presents The Test of the Scorpion. In this comic book, while the Jin Jihad is raging on one side of the city, the terrorist called the Scorpion sets a secondary attack in motion as he obtains a small tactical nuclear bomb. A mysterious, ever-living warrior called Cyrus the Dead Guy steps forward to test the faith of the Scorpion and his lunatic followers. This is an action-adventure story. It's a bit of swashbuckler that wraps up the Jihad stories. Available on Indie Planet. Get more info on the Scorpion Strikes the Jin Jihad, The Test of the Scorpion, and other titles at StigmataStudios.com. What you think? What you think? Thank you for tuning in to the, probably, I believe, is the world's first sober Abercast, by the way, too. So I appreciate that. Another milestone clicked, another click on the bucket list. Uh, So talk to you guys next week.